Shop Master T coming your way for So Special, and it's special because we have two of the members of the Daz Band with us today. And introduce yourself, fellas. Uh, my name is Skip Martin, lead vocals and trumpet. Bobby Harris, leader founder, saxophone. You know what? As I said earlier, if you're into old school music, let me see you hold your hand up like this here. First of all, I gotta tell you guys, you're looking clean. Thank you very much. You know, and, and like you know, that is part of the whole vibe of you know, even just the bands of uh, the bands of that era was was the cleanness, not only just musically, but just the presentation. I think the presentation had a lot to do with with bringing what we were bringing to the audience because it made a statement on the protocol, on respect. You put the suits on, we're going to work. You know what I mean? We're going to take care of business. So who you have more faith in? A guy that got a suit on, a guy that don't? I remember going to clubs and, and, and hearing your music. And for me, it was like, it, it was a transformation. You know, I used to go to the GQ magazine yeah. and, and look for a suit. You know, like, you know, it was $1,200, $1, but I, I got the suit for like $100. <laughs> but, I, but I look, you know, I try yeah, to look yeah, clean. Right. But, it, but it was a feel and a vibe. Like, what was the biggest difference for you guys, you know, obviously, you know, back then, you know, what you're experiencing now? We were doing a style for our sound of music at that time, and our style was very eloquent. It was very um, elegant. Yeah. It was very... Honoring our, we were honoring our fans. You know what yeah. I mean? So you guys paid to see us. We want you to see us at our best. You know what I mean? We're going we're gonna to dress like this. We're going to leave here sweating, and we hope you do too. But we're just showing them that we appreciated them being there, and we're going to give you a presentation of a five-star performance and a five-star look. And it wasn't just the clothes. Because if you're close enough to me, which you are at this point in time, you can also smell me. Our managers used to tell us, he says, I want the ladies to smell you guys 10 rows out. So before we even got to the stage, we doused ourselves in all kind of cologne, what have you. And these chicks 15 rows back were talking about, woo, was it back then? Because I mean, you guys weren't just the only super funk band. I mean, there was a lot of funk bands. Like, it must have been a really, really a competitive background. I never knew it was like that in, when you crossed over into the funk. It was competitive like that. There were eight of us and um, we always said, let's be part of a great show. And if we get dogged without a sound check, or if we get dog without great accommodations, we're gonna come on, we're gonna represent ourselves. And that's what we did, and then it started changing. You know, now, competitive was insecurity, and we were never insecure. We grew up in Cleveland, it's hard in Cleveland, and we weren't insecure going out there, we were confident. So, we weren't part of the competing, the, the competition aspect, you know, we could we could sing like the Temptations and play horns like Tower Power and, and Earth, Wind and & Fire, so we were good. We evolved through a concept of this man here and created a thing called United We Funk All Stars, where we dressed out as one band, the Daz Band, the Barquets, Confunction, SOS Band, and Charlie Wilson. We all dressed out as one band. We evolved to a point of that competitive need turned into embracing and it turned into maturity, and that's where we are now. So it's a great thing to be able to share stages with so many musicians, even guys that are rappers and doing what they do, we still have a camaraderie of entertainment. 
So we try to tie in with these people as well. And we still maintain our own status and our own stature. And we have more patience to deal with the bullshit that comes from young folks. And I can say this now without a beat because I'm grown and sexy. Don't play no game. <laughs> Okay, you, you, you get the band, it's solidified, you're, you're putting out your music. What happens when you get hits? Glorified, certified hits. Betty Whip was on the fifth record we did. But if you go back and listen to the Daz Band sound and all the music, we did a lot of really, I think, really great songs. And you always have to keep going, and sometimes you just get that one that springboards everything else. Then they start listening to everything else you did, you know? With success comes separation, and, and I call it the double-edged sword. The people the closest to you pay the biggest price for your success. So when you're successful, you can't go home and see mom every week. You can't invite your sister with 12 friends to come see the show every time. It's just, it's just impossible. So that's part of the double-edged sword of success, but you embrace that along with everything else, and we've been through all of that. Our world changed. I mean, you know, we won a Grammy, you know, American Music nomination, Image Award, Billboard Award. You know, we won a lot of awards. Um, met a lot of great people. Um, made money, you know, raised your family, sent kids to college, did, you know, things, things change, you know what I mean? But what I love about it now is that no, that no one's forgotten. That's why we can keep working. Right. And we're working on new music, coming out with a new album, you know, all this kind of stuff. So, so it's, it, it, for anyone that gets down on themselves, one record can change your whole life. Right. Yeah. One record. What do your fans say to you now? What does the music mean to them? Now, well, now the groupie say, when I take my teeth out, I'm going to come kiss you. <laughs> 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 no, but really, we enjoy what our fans give us today. The ones that have followed us, it means something to them. We are part of their lives, and we're so thankful. We're happy to get new fans, but we're more grateful to still have our old fans because those are extended portions of our family that help us to live the life that we've lived, enjoy the, the pleasures and the journeys that we've been on through this music. If it weren't for the fans, none of it would have been possible.